welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at my top 5 wide receivers in the class of 2023. Be sure to like the video and comment down below your favorite wide receiver in the class and who you can't wait to watch. Let's get things started here. I have a tie at number 5. First, we have Mikai Lemon. He's headed to USC at 6'1", 180 pound receiver out of California is everything you want in a slot receiver. Very good athlete, played on both sides of the ball at a very high level as a senior. He's a dynamic playmaker and great after the catch. He can line up outside or, or in the slot. When watching him, you notice great body control, whether that's running routes, winning 50-50 balls, or even controlling his pace. He can stop on a dime and make people miss, hence why he is such a great returner, both on punts and kick returns. The one knock on Lemon has been his top-end speed. What makes him even more impressive, though, as a prospect is without that elite top-end speed, he can still do just about anything he wants from a playmaking standpoint. At 5B, we have Jonte Cook. He's headed to Texas, played for the Longhorns, standing at 6 foot, 180 pounds. He led DeSoto to a Texas State Championship victory. The way he plays wide receiver, it's almost like he was born to do so. He understands leverage, coverages, and how to use his body, and also how to track down balls that are thrown to him. You can't cover him one-on-one -on -one for the reasons I just listed, he has a lot of go-to moves to beat, me, to beat man coverage, and his releases are elite for a high school player. His upside is very high, and that's why he's ranked high among most recruiting services. I see that same upside, hence him being tied for fifth in my own list. After the catch, he's very dangerous, and he showed that off in the, te in the Texas high school playoffs. Very similar to Makai Lemon, Cook has room to improve his top-end speed, and for those, the same reasons, even without the high-level speed, He's still a great pro prospect with room for development. Coming in at number four, we have Hakeem Williams. He's headed to Florida State to play for Mike Norvell. At six foot three, 205 pounds, out of Fort Lauderdale. He's been one of the highest risers over the last few months, an absolute freak of an athlete. At his height, he can run with the best of them. A matchup nightmare on the outside. Very high vertical as well that allows him to go up and win 50-50 balls at ease. When you're six foot three and already 205 pounds with room to grow, you also have to consider what he can become as a blocker. If, if he fills out his frame, he'll be as complete of a receiver as you can want at the next level, whether that's on Saturdays or Sundays. But Mike Norvell and Florida State are getting one of my favorite prospects in the entire class in Hakeem Williams. And personally, I think he has a day one potential, even in that wide receiver room that's loaded at Florida State. Coming in at number three, we have Brandon Ennis. He's headed to Ohio State to play for Brian Hartline. Coming in at six foot, 195 pounds, he's an absolute stud of a wide receiver. I've been a big fan of Brandon Ennis since the first time I watched him, back when he was playing quarterback for American Heritage when their QB1 was hurt, and he really drew my attention. He got the opportunity to showcase his skill set and what he can do with the ball in his hands. And after seeing the emergence of Jackson Smith and Jigba in the slot at Ohio State, it only makes you wonder and get excited to see what he'll do in that same position. That reason being is he's not the fastest player in the class, but he is so fine-tuned when it comes to mechanics and playing the receiver position. Going back to the summer, I remember he never ran the fastest of 40 times, but short area quickness is something that he excels at, and that leads to sharp cuts, breaking off routes, getting open, and those are, why, those are reasons why he's going to be such a highly sought-after prospect even after college and heading into the NFL draft. Number two, we have Jurion Dickey. He's headed to play for Dan Landing in Oregon. The six foot three, 215 pound receiver out of California is one of the more physically opposing players in the entire class. It's not every day you see a 215 pound guy run a four five in high school. Jurion is a running back with a wide receiver skill set. He has incredible explosiveness to go along with the big muscular frame that makes it very difficult to tackle him after the catch. Not only after the catch, but meeting and press is no problem for him at all. Just running through the pat just running through and past defenders with very little issue. Being so strong allows him to body up and turn routes and 50-50 balls into a basketball rebounding drill. I expect him to be an early contributor at the next level. And a huge reason for that is he won't have to get physically ready for college. Once he learns the X's and O's, he'll be good to go. Coming at number one, we have Zachariah Branch. He's headed to USC to play for Lincoln Riley. At 5'10", 175 pounds, Zachariah Branch is one of the best players in the entire country. To put it simply, I think he's the next Tyreek Hill. 
He has incredible speed, and he's in the same discussion for fastest player in the country. I mean, when you run the tape, first thing that stands out is, is the explosiveness and overall top-end speed. He's a smaller receiver, similar to Tyreek, but is strong and has a very compact frame. This kid has it all from crazy speed, body control, route running, hands, vision. It's all there. He's another guy you can't guard one-on-one. It just won't work out for you. He'll get open eventually, and it usually just takes a second or two. Going back and rewatching the All-American game just shows you how explosive he can be. He had a punt return touchdown in that game. But he's not just a really fast player. He also understands the position. He sets defenders up and then uses that leverage against them to gain even more separation. He should be a day one instant impact player at USC. He'll get reps early on at receiver, but on special teams, he'll most likely be the first team returner once he hits the practice field. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. Be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.